Tomahiko is an ugly disgusting loser involved in a tragic accident that claims his right hand. Not being able to pleasure himself correctly, Tamahiko falls into depression until his father sends a bride for him. The two of them slowly start liking each other and just when Tamahiko is about to clap her they get to know about an upcoming tragedy. However, before any of this, Tamahiko is someone who grew up without receiving any love from his family. It all started when he lost his mother in a car crash and his father's expectations of him, considering he couldn't use his right hand anymore. Tamahiko was sent to live in the mountains of Chiba and had given up on life. One day, a girl appeared at the villa and introduced herself as Yuzuki, his future bride. He remembers how his father promised to send him a bride and give Yuzuki a separate room to live in. The next morning, she starts cleaning the house and assisting Tamahiko in washing his face. However, Tamahiko returns to his room, wondering if every day will be like this from now on. Soon after, she barges into his room to clean it and later makes some food for him. Additionally, she washes his hair as well, later getting embarrassed about it. While Tamahiko is taking a bath, Yuzuki steps in and starts washing his back. He comments on how she must have lived an easy life but Yuzuki disagrees. She currently has two things to worry about and one of them is her wavy hair. This results in Tamahiko laughing at her, making Yuzuki glad as she decides to keep her hair as it is. Nonetheless, he kicks her out and finishes washing himself. At night, Yuzuki remembers her time at the girls' school when she informed her friends how her family was in debt and she was going to be married to their lender's son. Luckily, her friends comforted and reassured Yuzuki that she'd become a great wife. Later at night, Tamahiko is having trouble sleeping due to all the painful memories of his family. Just then, Yuzuki arrives and decides to sit next to him. He mentions how it must be hard for her as she's forced to live with a gloomy annoying shut-in like him. However, Yuzuki gives him some milk and mentions how she used to drink it back at the dorm. She further tells Tamahiko about the things she used to do and starts singing Justin Bieber's baby for him. Tamahiko comments on how he can't go to school because of his right hand and that no one would probably even mourn his demise. Without saying a word, Yuzuki gets up and gives Tamahiko a hug telling him that she was scared at first but was relieved after realizing how kind he was. She further proposes greeting the morning together as it's New Year's night. This results in Tamahiko panicking and soon after, Yuzuki appears in his room, wanting to sleep next to him. The next morning, Yuzuki greets him a new year, and the two of them enjoy breakfast together. The next day, Tamahiko walks into Yuzuki taking a bath, freaking out both of them. Later, Tamahiko reassures her that he didn't see her washboard of a body, and the two of them enjoy breakfast together. Later that day, he receives a letter from his father. Apparently, Tamahiko's sisters have received marriage proposals, and he has decided to make it look as if Tamahiko also met his demise in the car accident. In that way, Tamahiko's condition wouldn't bring shame to their family. Soon after, Yuzuki offers to bring him some soup but Tamahiko asks her to leave him alone. At night, she doesn't see Tamahiko come out of his room and the same happens the next day as well. She eventually decides to enter his room and realizes that he has caught a cold. She starts taking care of him and Tamahiko wakes up after a while, commenting that he should have just lost his life as it'd make things easier for everyone. Tamahiko then starts thinking of ways to end his life, making Yuzuki mad as she mentions that there is no need for him to hurt himself more after how much that geezer has hurt him. The next morning, Tamahiko wakes up and feels much better. He goes to see Yuzuki, who checks his temperature and then continues to prepare food for him. Out of nowhere, Tamahiko suggests going to Tokyo and just like that, the two of them arrive in Tokyo. Yuzuki visits a shopping center for the first time and is surprised to see all the fancy stuff. He then offers to buy her some new clothes and she gladly accepts the offer. She starts to struggle to choose one yukata and he ends up buying her two. Yuzuki tells him how this is the first thing her husband bought her, and it'll be precious to her all throughout her life, making him embarrassed. After roaming around the shopping center like a bunch of brookies, they decide to eat some ice cream. She decides to feed him some of it, making the boomers lose their minds. Tamahiko notices a kid eating with his family which reminds him of his dark childhood. Surprisingly, Yuzuki notices it and asks him to go back home. While riding the train, Yuzuki falls asleep on his shoulder and Tamahiko tries to push her away, but ends up letting her rest on his shoulder. From that day onward, Yuzuki started working on her kimono, and a month later, it was finished. Tamahiko is captivated by her looks, which Yuzuki notices. Just then, Tamahiko's little sister, Tamako visits his place and tries forcing herself in while mocking Tamahiko at the same time. Tamako's workers put her luggage inside the house and she rewards them handsomely. 
Afterward, she meets Yuzuki and figures that she's only a child, only to find out that Yuzuki is already 14. Tamako then starts making fun of the midget, mentioning how she's taller when she's only 12 years old. After showing Tamako her room, Yuzuki goes on to prepare food while Tamahiko informs her how Tamako is the smartest among the siblings and someone who's hard to figure out. Soon after, Tamako appears, informing Tamahiko about how they made up the news about his false demise and asks Yuzuki to bring the food to her room. Later, Yuzuki notices that Tamahiko is down in the dumps because of Tamako's arrival, and she suggests going for a walk. With that being said, the two of them hike the mountain and eventually arrive at a tree that has a little Inari statue inside. Yuzuki comments on how cute the statue is and Tamahiko also adds that it was good for him to see this. Following that, Yuzuki drinks some water from the river and so does Tamahiko, straight out of her tiny hands. On their way back, she holds Tamahiko's hands and the two of them watch the scenery and enjoy the springtime together. Later that day, Yuzuki is making milk caramels and Tamako is surprised to see her make it from scratch. Tamako further comments on how Yuzuki must hate living here against her will but she disagrees, saying that she loves taking care of the depressed loner. Following that, Yuzuki makes some candy out of the caramel and hand-feeds Tamahiko, making Tamako furious as she throws the candy away and leaves. At night, Tamako remembers her past when her father didn't give her any time and how she was hated by everyone at the school. Suddenly, the sound of thunder scares the daylight out of her and she asks Yuzuki's help to go to the restroom. On their way to the restroom, the thunder strikes again, making Tamako wet herself. This results in Yuzuki throwing Tamahiko in the bath and working hard to keep the water warm. Tamako wonders why Yuzuki is being so nice to her when all she has said are awful things to her. Following that, Yuzuki suggests sleeping together and Tamako tells Yuzuki about her difficult past. She couldn't stand staying at home and had to come to Tamahiko's house. Yuzuki mentions that she would shower Tamako with love if she were his little sister, and the two of them hugged each other. The next morning, Tamahiko notices the two of them getting along really well, wondering what could have happened in a single night. Later that day, Tamahiko is looking for a book hoping to increase his non-existent IQ when he hears music coming from the other room. Apparently, Yuzuki and Tamako are playing with their hair, and Tamako ends up loving Yuzuki's fluffy and curly hair. He tries to join the fun but Tamako scares him away. Later that day, Tamahiko is struggling with the hot climate when Yuzuki starts fanning him. However, the heat makes her dizzy and Tamahiko allows her to rest by letting her use his body as support. Afterward, Yuzuki acts as if she is alright, only to faint soon after. Luckily, Tamako arrives and takes her to Tamahiko's room. She starts taking off her clothes, forcing the creep to look away. Eventually, Tamako decides to go out and look for a doctor and asks Tamahiko to keep Yuzuki's forehead cool. This results in Tamahiko making up his mind to do his best and taking out some water from the well. However, he ends up spilling it all over the floor and Tamako, who brought the doctor, decides to take care of it herself. After the doctor is done treating her, he lashes out at Tamahiko for overworking Yuzuki and treating her like a servant. Luckily, Tamako arrives and forces the doctor to leave. She then confronts Tamahiko for not defending himself and he mentions how it's his fault for not paying attention to Yuzuki. At night, Tamako goes to Yuzuki's room with a fresh set of clothes and asks if she is really happy with her brother. Yuzuki tells Tamako a story from her childhood when one of her friends was mistreated by her family and she wanted to eliminate herself. When Yuzuki asked her mother for advice, she told her that when someone's heart has withdrawn into a shell, it's not easy to change. All one can do is watch over them, believing the time will come when she'll turn towards happiness on her own. This is the same thing Yuzuki is doing with Tamahiko, hoping he'll find happiness one day as well. That night, Tamahiko wonders if Yuzuki is doing alright and decides to check on her, only to notice her worsening condition. Yuzuki asks him to take off her belt as it's really tight. Tamahiko realizes that this is the reason she is struggling to breathe and gathers the courage to cut it open, panicking after seeing her plot. Soon after, Yuzuki wakes up, apologizing for making Tamahiko do something like that. She further complains about having such big talents as her body probably ignores her height and supplies all the nutrition to them. Tamahiko starts telling Yuzuki how he is the worst of the worst and someone who can't even help her in such dire conditions. He then suggests breaking this relationship and allowing Yuzuki to go home but she hugs him instead, promising to stay by his side forever. The next morning, Yuzuki has fully recovered and the three of them enjoy breakfast. 
Tamako tells Tamahiko that she will be returning home as she has decided to become a doctor. Tamahiko can't understand Tamako's sudden decision to become a doctor and she tells him that Uncle Tamasuke allowed her to visit his house. Following that, Yuzuki forces her to spill the beans and Tamako mentions how she was taught that other people don't matter, but her body moved on its own after seeing Yuzuki in a critical condition. She would have been able to cure her if she were to have medical knowledge. With that being said, Tamahiko thanks Tamako for taking care of Yuzuki and mentions that he is glad she came to his house. Later that night, the three of them decide to sleep in the same room. After everyone falls asleep, Tamahiko thinks of how all his siblings are peas in a pod and have gone through the same amount of pain. He pats her head and comments on how Tamako is the family member he cherishes the most. The next morning, Tamako is about to leave and she tells Tamahiko to pat her head when she's awake next time, making him embarrassed. On the train, she looks at the gift she received from them and starts tearing up. A few months later, Tamahiko is writing a diss track for his father when Yuzuki brings him some tea and introduces the cat Haru, who has been living near the house. She then realizes that it's market day and heads to the village to do some shopping. At the village, everyone starts recognizing Yuzuki as the overworked slave when suddenly, Tamahiko comes running and offers to hold her basket instead. With that being said, the two of them start shopping and Tamahiko gets overjoyed after coming across a bookstall. He informs Yuzuki that books were his only friend, considering how his parents gave up on him from the start. Later at night, Tamahiko notices a lot of tasty dishes and Yuzuki reminds Tamahiko that it's his birthday. Furthermore, she gifts him a bookmark as it might be good for him since he likes to read. Tamahiko sits in silence for a while and then starts crying but Yuzuki holds his hands and wishes him a happy birthday. This results in Tamahiko hugging Yuzuki and crying out of joy. Just then, they hear a strange noise and Tamahiko uses this excuse to leave the room, only to take a breath of relief after what just happened. Nonetheless, Tamahiko goes out to take a look and notices a girl sitting in one of the rooms. Apparently, she lives in the village and mocks him for reading some pretty questionable books. The girl then starts teasing him by offering herself and leaves afterward. Yuzuki also appears and Tamahiko blames the cat for the strange noise, trying his best to keep Yuzuki from seeing his collection of cultured magazines. However, Tamahiko soon notices that the girl managed to steal the bookmark that Yuzuki gave him and he starts following her on his bike. Meanwhile, that girl was successful in stealing his wallet and accidentally took the bookmark as well. That girl, Ryu, arrives at her house along with Tamahiko who was following her. Ryu's father tries to take the money from her but she refuses to give it to him, mentioning how he forces his daughter to do such stuff while he drinks at home all day. He ends up slapping her and when Ryu tries to take the wallet back, he beats her even more while Tamahiko hears all of it from outside, remembering how his father used to treat him. Having no other choice, Tamahiko returns home and goes to sleep without saying a word. The next day, after eating breakfast, Tamahiko makes his way to her house and catches Ryu bathing with her siblings. Later, she mentions how it's unexpected for a one-handed man to come for his wallet but Tamahiko mentions that all he wants is the bookmark. Just then, one of her siblings asks Ryu for help in math and she forces it on Tamahiko. After teaching the boys for a while and hanging out with them, it is time for Tamahiko to leave and he asks Ryu for the bookmark. Unfortunately, her father returns and he is forced to leave without the bookmark. After returning home, Yuzuki suggests having dinner together, but Tamahiko refuses and returns to his room. The next morning, Ryu visits his house and starts calling herself Tamahiko's mistress. She mentions how Tamahiko was overjoyed after seeing her divine plot, further telling Yuzuki that he gave the bookmark to her as a gift. This comes as a shock to Yuzuki and Tamahiko starts explaining himself. In the end, Yuzuki rips the bookmark and decides to put an end to the conversation. The next day, Yuzuki tries to act normally, making Tamahiko wonder if the matter really is settled. Just then, the phone rings and it's Tamako on the line. She informs Tamahiko how she has started going to school and made a lot of friends. Afterward, she wishes him a happy birthday and wonders if Yuzu had a little celebration for him. Tamako then questions him about the sadness in Yuzuki's voice and how he doesn't seem very happy as well. Eventually, Tamahiko tells her everything and she informs him that the people at the girls' school use bellflower as a sign to convey their unchanging love. However, seeing it in another woman's hand must have been heartbreaking for her. This makes Tamahiko realize his mistake and he decides to fix it no matter what. At night, Yuzuki comes to his room and notices that he is asleep. She then notices the bookmark and mentions that there is no need for him to fix it. But Tamahiko replies that the sentiment of unchanging love will remain the same no matter what the bookmark looks like. 
This results in Yuzuki apologizing for tearing it apart and commenting on how he should have told her when it got stolen. Seeing him skip meals and avoid her made Yuzuki worried and lonely. She continues to complain about things while Tamahiko sits in silence and hears all of them. At last, Tamahiko manages to fix the bookmark and Yuzuki loves how it came out. The next day, Ru's sibling came to Tamahiko's house, asking for another lesson. However, they brought some friends along as well. With that being said, he starts teaching the kids and the quantity starts increasing. All the compliments from the kids make him embarrassed and want to teach them more. Surprisingly, Ryu also visits and suggests making lunch for everyone with Yuzuki's help. While making lunch, Ryu tells Yuzuki that she likes Tamahiko and also apologizes for doing what she did the other day. Soon after, they bring food for everyone and Yuzuki comments on how Ryu is a really good older sister. After the kids leave, Yuzuki compliments Tamahiko for having great teaching skills. The next day, Tamahiko helps Yuzuki with the house chores and ends up sleeping on her lap. At night, he notices Yuzuki singing on her own and hugs her with his blanket, scolding Yuzuki for not being dressed appropriately for the cold weather. She tells Tamahiko that today is her birthday and she turns 15, which means she can become his bride anytime. However, Tamahiko mentions how he can marry her considering his circumstances. Furthermore, she is too good for him and someone like him is better off on his own. Nonetheless, he still wants to become someone who can bring joy to Yuzuki which is why he has asked his father to let him attend school. Yuzuki also mentions that living with him has not been hard for her a bit, and in fact, just being by his side makes her happy. Unexpectedly, he ends up kissing Yuzuki, making both of them embarrassed. Just then, the New Year's Eve bell rings and he proposes going to sleep. The next morning, one of Ryu's siblings tells Tamahiko that he won't be attending the lessons from now as he has been employed at a shop in Tokyo. Later, Tamahiko thinks about how he didn't know how to comfort the boy as working at that age never crossed his mind. Suddenly, Ryu comes to their house, informing them that her brother, Ryotaro, has gone missing. The three of them decide to split and search for him. She thinks about how Ryotaro was the one who always protected her, resulting in her bawling. Eventually, Yuzuki finds him sleeping in the storeroom and he starts crying, telling Tamahiko that he doesn't want to become a hired man. Tamahiko encourages him by saying that if the employee works hard and sincerely, their employer gives them time off so they can visit their family. Furthermore, he can even invite his family to Tokyo. This makes Ryotaro motivated and just then, Ryu comes running and gives him a hug. The next morning, Ryotaro is about to leave and everyone is present to see him off. He promises Ryu that he'll work hard and invite them to Tokyo one day. He then gives Ryu a hug and thanks Tamahiko before leaving. After he left, Ryu tells Tamahiko that Ryotaro never got attention from his real father and was really happy to have Tamahiko as his father figure. A few days later, Tamahiko receives a letter from Uncle Tamasuke. In that letter, he informs Tamahiko that Tamako has been working hard to become a doctor and mentions how he wants to help him as well. Apparently, Tamako told Tamasuke about Tamahiko wanting to go to school, and he wants to help him out. This results in Tamahiko calling Tamako to thank her with tears in his eyes. Following that, Tamahiko starts working hard on his studies while teaching the kids at the same time. One day, Yuzuki tells Tamahiko that her favorite idol, Katori, will be coming to Chiba Station. The kids ask Tamahiko to come along with them and he eventually agrees. Everyone is flabbergasted after seeing her in real life and Katori starts singing espresso for the audience. After the song, the fatty yells her name and she wink at him. Afterward, she starts singing another one of her songs, and listening to her makes Tamahiko glad that he came. Later, Tamahiko keeps on studying, eventually taking the entrance test at the school, and getting accepted. Finally, it is his first day and Yuzuki offers to walk him to school. Tamahiko remembers his past and how he was forsaken by his family, but this gives him courage and he decides to go on his own. After arriving at school, Tamahiko finds out that someone other than him also transferred to the school. Turns out, the boy's name is Hakaru and he is Katori's twin brother. After him, Tamahiko introduces himself and the teacher informs the class about his disability as well. Later, it's time for gym class and Tamahiko takes a few business days to wear his gym clothes which results in the whole class getting punished. As expected, everyone is roaming around Hakaru while Tamahiko is on his own. During art class, Hakaru decides to sit next to Tamahiko and starts laughing at his sad excuse of a drawing. Hakaru then shows Tamahiko his portrait, and the two of them start arguing about which one is the worse. The teacher eventually notices their drawing and starts scolding them both. Surprisingly, Tamahiko comes home and brings Hakaru along. Yuzuki serves them tea and wishes them good luck. 
Later, both of them are making portraits, and talking about Yuzuki makes Tamahiko blush. Later, Yuzuki asks Tamahiko about school and he lies about how great it was, making her happy as Yuzuki was anxious all day. Eventually, both of them are done making each other's portrait and Hakaru ends up liking this one. He then tells Tamahiko that it's not right to make Yuzuki smile by feeding her lies and Tamahiko starts regretting it. But Hakaru advises him to just turn his lies into truth and goes to eat dinner. He enjoys eating Yuzuki's cooking and says that he is lucky to have such friends. Hearing the word friend for the first time in his miserable life surprises Tamahiko. The next day, Hakaru visits again and brings Katori along. Yuzuki is shocked to find out that Hakaru and Katori are twins. Katori then asks Yuzuki to teach her what love is. She elaborates that she's writing a column in a girl's magazine and Yuzuki is familiar with it already. Katori is thinking of writing a song to cheer all the young women in love but doesn't know much about love. She wants to learn from Tamahiko and Yuzuki, considering they are in love, as mentioned by Hakaru. Yuzuki then gives Katori a room to stay in until her song is finished and Hakaru decides to head home. From that day onward, Katori starts keeping an eye on the two of them. Eventually, the kids arrive to study and are surprised to see Katori present at the house. Tamahiko decides to let Katori handle the lessons and she starts teaching the kids the basics of singing. Later at school, Tamahiko hesitantly gives a pencil to one of his classmates and Hakaru further increases his reputation by showing everyone the latest cultured magazine that Tamahiko owns. On their way back, Hakaru asks Tamahiko about Katori and he mentions how she has been getting along with everyone but is having difficulty with songwriting. He suggests Hakaru visit her but he refuses and heads back home. Elsewhere, Katori asks Yuzuki about her relationship with Tamahiko, and she replies that Tamahiko is someone who she believes will always be kind to her. Furthermore, Yuzuki has started getting butterflies whenever she looks at him, making Katori wonder if it's love. She eventually figures out that combining Yuzuki's feelings with her own feelings for music is the way to go. Later, Tamahiko tells Yuzuki that Hakaru has been avoiding Katori and Yuzuki informs him that Katori told him that Hakaru was the one who loved music first. The next day, while the two of them are having lunch, Tamahiko asks Hakaru about the reason he avoids Katori. He informs Tamahiko that he was the one who liked music first but got sick and ended up giving his guitar to Katori. It took him seven years to recover but by then, she was already a popular singer. Katori asked him to sing together but at this point, catching up to her was too exhausting for Hakaru. Tamahiko understands him as he is in the same position after what happened to his right hand. All he wished for was to be eliminated already but it was Yuzuki who helped him out. This makes Hakaru realize that Katori must be waiting for him to open his heart as well. A few days later, the kids gather all the villagers for a special Katori concert. But before Katori performs, Hakaru steps on the stage and starts singing. Soon after, Katori joins him as well and the two of them sing together. After that, Katori starts singing her new song that everyone enjoys. Later, Tamahiko and Yuzuki are on their way home on his cycle and she thanks him for giving her a ride. Tamahiko replies that there's no need as he will always take her everywhere from now. Tamahiko writes a letter to his uncle, informing him about how things have been going and inviting him to his place as well. Meanwhile, Yuzuki also receives a letter from his friend, informing her how she got married and is already pregnant. Yuzuki mentions how Midori, her friend, will be moving to Kyushu and she might not be able to meet her again. Tamahiko tells Yuzuki to go and see her friend and reassures her that he'd be fine on his own. With that being said, the two of them first visit a shrine to pray for Midori. Tamahiko also buys a charm for Yuzuki to give to Midori. When it is time for her to leave, Yuzuki mentions how she asked Ryu to take care of him while she is away. This reminds Yuzuki when she asks for Ryu's help, telling her that she doesn't hate Ryu as her kindness reminds Yuzuki of her older sister who lost her life due to some illness. Just when the train is about to leave, Tamahiko tries kissing Yuzuki but comes back to his senses before it happens. Yuzuki eventually leaves and arrives in Tokyo, where he meets up with Midori and congratulates her. Later, the two of them visit a restaurant and Midori tells Tamahiko how her husband apologized to her family after popping the cherry of their daughter. Yuzuki then gives Midori the charm that Tamahiko bought for her. Afterward, the two of them visit Midori's apartment and enjoy singing and eating together. Finally, it is bedtime and Midori is glad that Yuzuki didn't find herself in any sort of trouble. The next day, the two of them stroll around the town, remembering their days at school. Elsewhere, Ryu brings food for Tamahiko and mentions how Yuzuki will be coming home today. She then teases Tamahiko for always thinking about her when she was gone. Just then, an earthquake strikes and destroys the village. He tries to help the villagers but they refuse to take his help. 
Tamahiko starts worrying about how it must be worse in Tokyo. He sits at his house, constantly worrying about Yuzuki and blaming himself for sending her there. Suddenly, he hears some strange noise and realizes that it's the cat. He then notices the muffler that Yuzuki made for him before leaving. Apparently, she made one for herself as well and wanted to ride together on the bicycle while wearing them. This makes him feel a little better and Tamahiko realizes that she is a tough girl who will come running back home. Following that, Tamahiko gets ready to go out while thinking about how he loves Yuzuki. With that being said, he sets out of his house to bring Yuzuki back. After leaving his house, Tamahiko runs into the kids and Ryo. She asks to let her tag along as she's worried about Ryotaro. Tamahiko then asks them about the villagers and allows the kids to bring everyone whose house was destroyed to his house. At night, the two of them decide to take a break and Tamahiko mentions how he is willing to go to lengths if it comes to Yuzuki and Ryu is the same when it comes to Ryotaro. The two of them eat pickle plums together and eventually arrive at the train station which is destroyed as well. However, he reassures himself that Yuzuki will be fine and decides to put his trust in her. Eventually, they arrive at Tokyo which has been completely destroyed and people are taking shelter in the train station. Tamahiko starts finding Yuzuki when he runs into Tamako and faints soon after. Soon after, Tamahiko finds himself in a medical shelter with his uncle by his side. He tries to leave but Tamasuk mentions how finding a single girl in such dire condition is almost impossible. However, seeing Tamahiko's dedication shocks his uncle and he allows him to leave. When he is about to leave, Tamako comes running and offers to help him. They look for her at the other medical station and then leave a message for her at the town square. After looking all around Tokyo, the thought of Yuzu losing her life starts circulating in his brain but Tamako reassures him that she won't leave him all alone. She then starts crying and Tamahiko realizes that Tamako is only 13 and has been putting on a brave face. Following that, the two of them notice a girl walking on the bridge and they instantly grab her by her arm, thinking she might be thinking of ending her life. Turns out that the girl is Midori and she informs Tamahiko that Yuzuki got separated from her. Midori then starts crying and apologizing but Tamahiko consoles her and asks Tamako to take care of Midori. He pats her head and continues to look for Yuzuki all around Tokyo. He spends the whole night visiting all sorts of medical centers and starts remembering his days with Yuzuki. Just then, he notices Katori singing and Hakaru greets Tamahiko, telling him that Katori has been singing to uplift everyone's spirits. He then informs the two of them about Yuzuki and after consoling him, Katori gives him some food to eat. Later, Tamahiko is walking around the town when a kid steals his food, and his little sister who was following him falls on the ground. The kid tries protecting his sister and Tamahiko decides to give them the food out of respect. The kids tell Tamahiko that they got separated from their family and didn't have anything to eat. Their big sister was with them but fell down. The kids then take Tamahiko to the location, telling him that she isn't their real sister and is named Yuzuki. He panics and enters the house, finding Yuzuki lying there unconscious. He then tells the kids to go meet Katori as she will surely help them. Meanwhile, he picks Yuzuki up and runs towards the medical centers. Yuzuki is dreaming and finds herself in a land full of snow, and remembers his time with his family. Her mother always wanted Yuzuki to be the happiest girl in the world, but she was forced to leave her after finding out about her dad's debt. In the car, Tamahiko's father called his son a useless burden, making her realize that Tamahiko must have endured a lot of pain. But after meeting him, she was sure that he would treasure her and reassure her mother that everything was fine. Yuzuki then thinks about her feelings towards Tamahiko, finding it hard to tell them to him. She decides to write a letter instead but fails and leaves a gift for him instead. She then remembers how she and Midori were struggling after the earthquake but were separated. While walking on her own, she came across the two kids and sang songs to calm them down. While dreaming, she regrets not telling Tamahiko about her true feelings and starts running while constantly calling out his name. Finally, she wakes up in real life as well and the two of them start crying after seeing each other. Unexpectedly, she grabs his face and kisses him in front of everyone, followed by her confessing her feelings. After finding out that she is in a medical center, Yuzuki asks Tamahiko about Midori and the children. Tamako reassures her that Midori is doing alright and meets up with her. One by one, everyone greets Yuzuki which results in a fight between Tamako and Ryu over who is closer to Yuzuki. Meanwhile, Tamahiko gives Yuzuki some porridge and she forces him to feed it to her. Suddenly, Tamahiko's father arrives and informs Tamasuke that his other son was injured. 
He then asks Tamasuk to come along and leave the patients to some other doctor. However, Tamasuk straight up refuses and mentions how Tamahiko walked all the way from Chiba for Yuzuki. This results in his father and mother leaving. Following that, Tamahiko stayed in Tokyo for a little longer to help out his uncle with work. Additionally, he teaches the kids how they should help someone in need and start off by helping those who are close to them. Finally, they all return to Tamahiko's house and the girls start complimenting Yuzuki's plot. Meanwhile, Tamahiko and Hakaru are enjoying their time in the hot spring and the kids force him to stay for a little longer. Elsewhere, Ryu once again formally apologizes to Yuzuki for doing what she did when they first met. Luckily, Yuzuki forgives her instantly and reminds her that the two of them are friends. They then notice Tamako eavesdropping which results in a fight between them. Soon after, Tamahiko returns and everyone wishes him a happy birthday. The kids thank him for lending them the house and he praises the kids for working hard as well. Furthermore, he praises Tamako for wanting to become a doctor and Katori for helping people under stress with her songs. Finally, he thanks Yuzuki for being alive and Hakaru for being his friend. This was it for Tamahiko and his midget girlfriend. When do you think the two of them will get married? Comment marriage below if you like the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.